When we think about explanations for organic reactions, commonly we'll be looking at unshared electron pairs and the role that they play in chemical reactions. So it's particularly important to be able to look at structures and know, without struggling, where electron pairs are in a molecule that are unshared, these so-called lone electron pairs. It's easiest if we understand a couple of rules about bond line structure convention for uh, writing structures. One of the rules is they always show formal charges. And the second is they may or may not show lone electron pairs. The fact is that um, whether the lone pairs are shown or not depends on what the person who drew that structure uh, thinks is best and whether somebody and believes that it's particularly important to show them to explain something. Not everybody uses the same thinking to uh, decide whether to show the lone pairs or not, so I thought we'd better go through some structures that will have lone pairs and look at examples of how we can figure out that they're really there. And to do this, it makes sense to organize our examination of this by the particular atoms in question, so let's look at nitrogen first. Here's some examples. You see, in each case, I am showing the fact that there's a charge, if there is a charge. And now we have to figure out whether there's lone pairs involved. The simplest way to do this is to remember that each atom will have a filled outer shell. And so for the atoms in the first row, I mean the atoms in the second row, this means that each atom will have a valence shell containing eight electrons. Nitrogen has a sigma bond to two carbons, as is shown here, represented by alkyl groups. So there's two pairs of electrons represented by what I've written here. It needs to have four pairs of electrons to have eight in the outer shell, so there's two more pairs. If you want to just check yourself, you can do that, remembering that nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell all by itself, because it's in column five in the periodic table. We'll subtract a number of electrons equal to the unshared electrons, one, two, three, four. And then we'll subtract an additional electron for each sigma bond that it has. There's two sigma bonds, so two more electrons. That equals minus one. And you can do this calculation for any of the structures that I'm going to do, but I'm going to do the shortcut way and simply look at filled outer shells and see what electron pairs we need to be sure that structures and atoms have filled outer shells. So in this structure, nitrogen has one, two, three sigma bonds. That's six electrons already. It needs two more as an unshared pair. In this structure, nitrogen has four sigma bonds, one, two, four alkyl groups each. So it's two, four, six, eight. There are no, there's no more room in the valence shell. So this has none shared pairs. Let's look at oxygen. We could have a structure like this. Uh, another example that's common, we could have, or we could have a carbon-oxygen double bond. And where do, we, where do we put electron pairs in these guys? Well, this uh, oxygen has a single sigma bond to it, so that's two electrons. It needs six more, three pairs. This oxygen has two sigma bonds to it, four electrons, needs four more two pairs. This oxygen has a sigma bond to a carbon and two more sigma bonds to hydrogens, two, four, six. It needs two more electrons. That's a single pair. Here's an oxygen that has a double bond. That's two bonds, two, four electrons. It needs four more. That's two pair. And here's an oxygen that has two, four, six electrons and sigma bonds. It needs eight, so it needs one pair. Halogen atoms are real common also. So it's uh, commonly to see a halogen atom simply attached to a carbon. And sometimes we'll see a structure like this. Again, halogen needs eight electrons in a filled valence shell. It has two electrons here. It needs six more, three pair. So a typical alkyl halide has a halogen with three unshared pairs. 
For a halogen that has a positive charge, we've got four electrons already associated with the halogen, so it needs four more. That would be two pair. So you see it's pretty easy to identify unshared pairs on atoms if we look at the charge, but we also can simply look at the number of electrons already in the valent shell, realize that that valent shell will be filled, and add enough electrons in terms of lone pairs to reach the filled outer shell, which for these common atoms is an octet. Nitrogen, oxygen, and halogens all will have octets. If you want to uh, confirm any of this, of course, go ahead and do the formal charge calculations, but you'll see that they all work out more readily if you simply look at how many electron pairs are needed to have a filled outer shell.